It's fashionable at this time of year for people to come out with predictions about property, sales and lettings. So I'm going to give you my tuppence worth. So I think you've got to start off with where we were last year to give it some kind of context. And obviously up to the end of the summer, possibly September time, the sales market in particular, particular was very, very buoyant. So much so, we were getting record increases. And over two years, 2021 and 2022, there was in excess of a 20% increase collectively. I did say that inevitably there was going to become a period of realignment, readjustment. And indeed, that did happen at the end of September. Uh, without being party political, I'd have to say the mini budget. I think most people would agree the mini budget undoubtedly uh, acted as a catalyst for that. What we did find was that the interest level in buying property dropped significantly. There were 98 property reductions across the county of Wrexham in the first week of October. The previous 18 months, I think you're talking about 15 property reductions because every property was going for the full marketed price, something close to it, or indeed, in many cases, above marketed price. Now, will that in 2023 lead to a crash? I'm not aware of anyone who is talking about a crash. Let me define a crash. A crash is what happened in 2009 where you had up to 20% plus reduction in residential property. Nobody is thinking that will happen. But these are some of the numbers that are tumbling out of various media. You've got Nationwide and Zoopla, and they believe there'll be a reduction of 5% over the course of 2023. Hardly a crash. Lloyds Bank are more pessimistic. They believe it'll be 8%. They also have set aside £668 million to cover bad debt because there's a feeling that some people will find it very, very tough to pay their mortgage. The one that concerns me, I guess, is Office of Budget Responsibility, the OBR, because they're an independent body that advises government and they tend to sense check any government polit uh, policy. They were the people actually who were ignored in the mini budget and they believe it'll be closer to 9%. So 9% reduction is significant, but it is not a crash, not a crash. The one bit of information that has become apparent to us uh, via my colleague, Caris Bailey, is that there is in 2023, 1.9 billion, 1.9 billion pounds of mortgage value that is coming out of contract. That is to say, somebody was on a fixed term contract, but it ends in 2023. Now it's predicted that the average increase over what that protected contract offered in terms of interest rate, compared to what's on the market now, will mean on average in excess of 400 pounds increase in mortgage payments. That's quite significant. And that's something that in an ideal world, all people would be able to afford, but inevitably there will be some people who will find it more difficult. The unearing question is, should I buy a property now or should I buy a property later? My advice remains consistently and boringly the same. If you find a property that you fall in love with, then you should really think seriously about buying that property if it's affordable to you. I wouldn't worry about short-term price decreases. The projection, again, from overwhelmingly most publications and so-called experts is that prices will begin to plateau towards the end of 2023 and will be solid and stable in 2024, but will increase, start increasing again in 20. 25. Now, bearing in mind that the average UK household stays in the same property for seven to nine years, then obviously you'll ride out that, those kind of wrinkles along the way. So if you find a property you fall in love with, 
by it by all means just stress test your budget to make sure that you can afford it